And Max Comic, he runs the Big Black Comedy Show at the Den Theater. You guys should check it out. He's also a uh, Chicago Roast Battle regular, just like yours Woo! truly. Woo! Please make some noise for the very funny Melvin Stewart!
saying? You know, whole time you can't, you know, you can't even pay your bills, but you the shit because you like to laugh at her. You know what I mean? Like, that's really what it do to you. But life and white people have a good way of humbling you as a nigga. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I'm gonna bring y'all into the nigga experience for a second. Let me tell y'all what it is. So I had a show back in July, and the show was great. Everybody did really, really well. It was great. Like the audience, was, and it came to laugh. It was an amazing show. It was like a perfect show as a comedian because you say something stupid and people are laughing. You're like, oh, I'm amazing. So I go up, so after the show, this white woman comes up to me, and she's just like, hey, I recognize you from somewhere. So in my mind, I'm instantly like, I'm the best fucking comedian ever. I'm Kevin Hart, I'm Dave Chappelle, I'm Richard Pryor. None of the niggas got nothing on me. I am the one and only. I am the reincarnation of Jesus Christ. You feel me? Like, this is what I'm thinking. This is what I'm thinking. And in my, and what I'm saying out loud is, I'm just listing my fucking credits. Like, I don't know, this random white woman, I'm just like, oh, you know, I'm a regular on Zany's Rose Battle. She's like, no, that's not it. I'm like, oh, you know, I produce a, a, a big successful comedy show at the Dead Theater. She's like, no, 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 that's not it. I'm like, oh, I've been to the Laugh Factory a few times this year. She was like, no, no, you was that FedEx nigga. And, uh, and she was, she, she, okay, let me clarify, I'm sorry. Let me pause the story. She didn't actually say FedEx nigga, that's what I heard. <laughs>
want to do with my life 30 years from now. You feel me? Like, I really want to be making it. But, like, let me tell y'all something. My wife saved me from being single. Where are all the single people at? One, I know you're a sure. jerk. So let me tell you right there, too. The sad nigga right there. <laughs> I've been wanting to say it. I'm sorry. I don't really mean that. <laughs> like, he, he kept saying sad N word and it got in my head. I'm sorry. <laughs> to be honest, sad nigga is a cool ass insult. It makes you sound like you're a superhero or something like that. You feel me? Like a, but a superhero in like a low budget ass movie, but I'm still going for it. Like, but yeah, like I said, my wife saved me from being single because honestly, ain't nothing more sad than a single man outside of one by himself. You feel me? Like, not at all. You like, fuck it, I'm gonna go see this comedy show at uh, Two Brothers and then I'm gonna go home and cry in the shower. That's all you do as a goddamn single man. It's never fun. And my wife saved me from that shit. I was, <laughs> how do I say this? I was single for so long that I acquired a plethora. That means a lot, I Googled it before my set. I acquired, I acquired a plethora of pocket pussies. You feel me? <laughs> Like I, I had a white one, I had a brown one, I had an orange one, I had one with a dick, like I was just spending the time of my life. I had all the pocket pussies, you feel me? And I knew I got bad when I started naming them, you feel me? Like, like the white one was Miranda Cosgrove, the brown one was Angela Bassett. Oh, you thought y'all knew who Miranda Cosgrove is? <laughs> She's an like, Before I said that, she was an adult now. Okay, you know, she was all, we were all the same age. By the time I wrote this joke, so Miranda Cosgrove is a Nickelodeon star who is an adult. I promise you. <laughs> I'm gonna clarify that. But y'all, y'all look her up, you'll see. The brown one was Angela Bassett. Shit. The orange one was Arnold Schwarzenegger, because like I said, I was in an experimental time in my life. Like, <laughs> I really had to make sure where I was at, you know what I mean? She took him away from me, though, and saved me from that shit. I'm, I love her for that. Man, let me tell y'all, let me tell you real quick. I got recognized for my material for once, and it was specifically because of this one joke. Like, I was at the fucking bank pulling out some money to get a haircut, and a random Hispanic girl ran up to me, and she was just like, Mr. Pocket Pussy! <laughs> I can't be Mr. Pocket Pussy no fuck! Like, I have children, I can't be fucking Mr. Pocket Pussy! Like, I couldn't be like, I couldn't be like Mr. Black nigga. She could've called me a nigga, and I would've preferred that. Well, I guess that's me now. Y'all can call me Mr. Pocket Pussy from now on. But, but back to what I was saying. My wife, like, saved me from being single because, like, I was single for so long that I lost all interest in normal pornography. You feel me? Like, no more big booty Latinas, no more, like, interracial gangbangs, none of that bullshit. You, know? you know what became my shit? There, you, you ever catch yourself jerking off to a picture of Betty White from 1984? You can admit it, it's okay, I understand. Because like, you see Betty White and you're like, oh, if I fuck her, she can make me more stable. You know, you fuck her for productivity, not for attraction. You feel me? Like, that's where I was at. I was like, I don't need big titties. I need a bitch to buy me a house. You know what I mean? Like, I need something different. You feel me? Like, I got another one for y'all. Have you ever, you right here, my man, you definitely look like you'll fit this in the middle. Have you ever caught yourself jerking off to, um, the girl with the green dress from the Michael Jackson You Rock My Roll music video? Somebody say yes! Whoever said yes! Oh, okay, cool! That's what, I don't even want to comment on that shit. <laughs> For those of y'all who cannot see, the nigga in the wheelchair is the one that said yes. <laughs> and if I say any more, my comedy group might be over. <laughs> I was single for so long that the first time me and my wife had sex, two and a half minutes in, I came and said, I love you in the same breath. <laughs> and let me tell y'all something. If you come in two and a half minutes on the first time, and you don't got a good ass excuse, that girl's gonna fucking leave forever. You feel me? <laughs> I didn't know what to tell my wife. I told her ass I had cancer. God damn. <laughs>
tried to go completely left. This is why I am fucking stupid. Completely left. <laughs> and you just gotta accept it. But she's great though, you know. Let me tell you how I know my wife is crazy. I didn't know this when we first met. Maybe like I said, five years. Did you know that if you pop three of someone's tires, insurance doesn't cover that shit? <laughs> oh, see, you fucking know. You are insane. She did that with shit before. You feel me? If you know that, you are crazy and I cannot fucking trust you. But also call me after the show. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Little things like that. Like, you know, the, the first real story where, like, you know, you get those deep talks early on in your, like, new relationships. Those are the bond and just know each other. The first legit story my wife ever told me is how she shot a dude after he broke into her and her roommate's house. Like, she didn't talk about, like, her being a kid and going to kid land or nothing like that or, like, her favorite hairstyle. Like, no. She literally said, I am willing to kill a nigga if it's necessary. You feel me? Like, I wasn't sure if that was a warning or trying to protect me, but either way, I'm like, my dick hard right now, nigga. What's up? <laughs>